What's up guys? Happy Monday! Welcome back to my channel! If you're new here, I'm Daria. I upload new videos every Monday, so make sure to hit subscribe and tick the notification bell below so you don't miss any videos coming up soon. So let's dive into the subject matter of this video. If you didn't already guess from the title, this video is about intermittent fasting. Is intermittent fasting right for you? I had a couple requests for a video on fasting diets in general, but I wanted to spend a day to focus specifically on intermittent fasting. The category of fasting is super broad and people do it for a lot of different reasons, ranging from religious and spiritual traditions to as a weight loss strategy. So that's more of what we're gonna be focusing on today. Within the category of intermittent fasting, there are several different methodologies. So I wanna get into the different methods that people use when they start intermittent fasting. I wanna talk about the science behind intermittent fasting. And I just wanna give you guys my honest, unfiltered opinion about intermittent fasting. And finally, the relationship between intermittent fasting and eating disorders. Obviously, you guys, I'm not a doctor, so don't take any medical advice from this video. Disclaimer over. If you're watching this video and you're alive in 2020, you probably have at least heard of intermittent fasting, but let's get into what intermittent fasting actually is. So the first thing to know is intermittent fasting is not a diet, it is a dieting pattern. So it's all about timing. There's three primary methodologies that people use with intermittent fasting. The first and most popular is the 16-8 method. So with this method, you have a 16 hour fasting window followed by an eight hour eating window each day. And 16 plus eight equals 24. I am a super genius. It would look like waking up, not eating anything until 2 p.m. and then your eating window would go until 10 p.m after which time you would fast all the way again until 2 p.m. the next day. This method is probably the most popular because it sounds, you know, pretty accessible. If you're listening to this, you're like, okay, that sounds like something I could do, probably. I also think this is gonna be the most sustainable method for people long-term and fit into more people's lifestyles. The second method is the 5-2 method. In this method, people will eat normally for five days a week and then for two days a week, they restrict their calories to under 500 calories for those two days. I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Take a look at the help section in your Alexa app. Okay. <laughs> the last method is called alternate day fasting. Alternate day fasting looks like one day of fasting and then one day of regular eating. So it's just like what it sounds like. When I learned about all these different methodologies, I got curious about whether or not there was one that was proven to be more effective than the other. But studies comparing the relative efficacy of these three methods actually don't really exist. So if you're getting started with intermittent fasting, probably just pick the one that you think fits your lifestyle the best because we don't really know which one is the most effective. Speaking of studies, let's talk about the science behind intermittent fasting. There are so many claims that we hear about all kinds of different diets all the time. So things that you might have heard about intermittent fasting are that it cures cancer, that it helps with cellular regeneration, that it will make your skin better, that it will give you more mental clarity, more energy, all kinds of claims. So. Which ones should we believe and which ones have actually been proven to be true? So in December of 2019, the New England Journal of Medicine published an article titled The Effects of Intermittent Fasting on Health, Aging, and Disease. And they review articles and studies that have been published about how intermittent fasting influences these factors, health, aging, and disease. They looked at animal and human studies. I'll link this article below in case you wanna check it out yourself, but I will also leave you with some of my takeaways. 
there's something really cool that happens in our bodies during fasted periods, which is that our body switches from using glucose as a source of energy to producing fatty acids that are then turned into ketone bodies. And these have an awesome effect on our cellular function and our metabolism. The ketone body level will usually rise in the blood within eight to 12 hours of the onset of fasting. And this causes cellular autophagy to occur, which is the process where damaged cells are replaced and recycled by undamaged ones. Cool. And that's pretty cool. This article also found that in animals and humans, intermittent fasting has a positive effect on physical performance. In animal studies, caloric restriction has some proven benefits, but similar benefits shown in human studies aren't really there. Clinical studies on intermittent fasting in humans have been relatively short term. As of right now, it's not clear that intermittent fasting is a superior method to any other dieting strategy as far as compliance rates, weight loss, or biological changes go. So yes, there's definitely some evidence in favor of intermittent fasting in both animal and human studies, but most of this data comes from animal studies. So the science right now is not the most compelling that it could be, but there's still a lot that we don't know. Nutrition is really difficult to research because there's so many variables and compliance with study participants is sometimes really difficult. Let's talk for a little bit about the relationship between intermittent fasting and eating disorders. There are some people who think that intermittent fasting is an eating disorder, and that is not the claim that I am making. I am not here to say that if you're intermittent fasting, you have an eating disorder, or that if you try IF, you will develop an eating disorder. Here's what I am saying. If you're someone with a propensity for disordered eating, intermittent fasting may not be right for you. Delayed eating and really strict dietary rules may trigger and maintain binging episodes. And there is some evidence that IF increases the risk of overeating and binging. It's easy for people to begin linking avoiding food with weight loss, and that makes them feel rewarded for starving themselves. This can trigger fear around eating food, and you can see how this behavior could become disordered pretty quickly. Another potential concern is that intermittent fasting may trigger some stress around events that will inevitably occur involving food during your fasting window. Here's my take on intermittent fasting. To me, Intermittent fasting sort of does the opposite of intuitive eating. It encourages you to ignore your hunger cues and wait for your eating window to open before eating anything. I don't like that. If I wait, if I'm really, really hungry and I just have to wait like three more hours before I can eat anything, I know that I'm gonna be so much more likely to overeat and probably reach for more highly processed foods that are just readily available when I do get to eat something. For my body, it works best when I just eat when I'm hungry. <laughs> if you're someone who does intermittent fast and you love it and it works really well for you and your lifestyle and you feel amazing, absolutely wonderful. Ultimately, I definitely advocate for giving your body a break from food every now and then. Yes, everyone should have certain periods within a 24 hour day where they are not eating. <laughs> For me, naturally, I think I stick to more of a like 15-9 sort of pattern where I'll have like a 15 hours of fasting and more around nine hours of an eating window. And that's not always super precise. I don't put any limitations on that and I don't stick to it strictly. If you're someone who is like really benefiting from that benchmark of restricting your calories at a certain hour of the day and that feels more natural to you than adopting any rules around which foods to pick, that's fantastic. As always, you guys, I am a huge proponent of whatever works best for you. So I'm not here to say don't intermittent fast or don't try it. For me, it's not the thing. So I hope that you learned something. I hope this video was helpful and helped you sort of decide whether or not intermittent fasting may be right for you or something that you wanna try. If you had a good time, go ahead and hit subscribe, give this video a like, and also let me know in the comments below what you wanna see in videos coming up soon, or if there's any questions you have about intermittent fasting that I didn't answer in this video. I'd love to hear from you. I really want this channel to be about what you guys wanna see. So yeah, that's it. I'll see you next week. Okay, goodbye for now.